You're all set, Jane. Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order. And um, can I have a motion to move to executive session for the purposes to discuss uh, personnel? So moved. Second, Louise. All right, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All positive. Is that everyone? Yep. Okay, then let's go into executive session. All right, Jane, go ahead and try. We think we're live. All right. I'd like to call the uh, meeting to order. It's 7.03. Welcome to all who have come to observe the meeting of the Iroquois Central School District's Board of Education. There are two periods of recognition of guests listed on the meeting agenda. The first is for comments regarding agenda items. The second is for topics not on the agenda. Speakers may offer comments related to school operations and programs but the board cannot hear personnel complaints against any individual associated with the school system. Please address these concerns to the appropriate administrator. If you wish to be recognized, please fill out the appropriate form and turn it into the district clerk. As per policy 1514, public participation at board meetings, public comment by district residents is lit limited to 15 minutes total unless the board suspends this limit. Each person is given up to three minutes in which to address the board. Additionally, no more than three people may speak on a single topic unless the board also waives this limitation. This is a meeting held in public rather than a public meeting, which means we will not be engaging in dialogue with members of the community this evening. District personnel will follow up with you regarding your concerns. Rest assured, we are listening carefully and take seriously what you have to say. Please demonstrate respect by speaking to the issues, sharing ideas and opinions, but not engaging in personal attacks. The board appreciates your willingness to share your concerns and celebrations this evening. Please be advised this meeting is being live streamed and the recording will be posted on the Iroquois website. And with that, I'd like to call Wales primary students, Anna and Zoe up to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Nice job, students. Nice job. Thank you for joining our meeting tonight. And that brings us to our student report with middle school students, Alexander, Claire, Eddie, and, and uh, oh, I'm sorry, Alexander's from sixth grade, Claire is from seventh grade, and Eddie is from eighth grade. And they're here to give us their report tonight of what's going on in the middle school. So with that, I'll turn it over to those students. Hi, I'm Claire Imhoff. I go to Iroquois Middle School and I'm in seventh grade. I'm currently participating in our middle school's production of Aladdin at After School Drama Club. I play the role of Kasim, one of Aladdin's friends, along with Alex and Eddie. That'll turn it over to and those. Drama Club started in late October, and our show that we have been working towards for several months is finally coming up on February 4th, 5th, and 6th. Performing arts means so much to me because I've been doing it for so long, but most importantly, it means more to me now than ever because it helps me take a break from how stressful the world is right now and act out a life that isn't going through what we are today. I am more than grateful that Ms. Persinger, Ms. Fox, and Mr. Piacente will take time out of their day and stay after school to teach us about drama club. They don't get paid to take countless hours out of their days to make costumes, sets, and teach us to do any of these skills, so I want to thank them for everything. It's ever so generous. I think that is amazing that the school offers programs that can help people just take a break from what's happening and help students not just be in school to learn, but also to have somewhere that students can just socialize and find a place that truly makes them happy. Iroquois and especially Drama Club did that for me. 
Iroquois also just finished one of our many yearly fundraisers where we helped over 50 families in the Iroquois district. Um, the fundraiser is a program called Danny's Helping Hands where you can donate essential needs such as clothing, groceries, and furniture to families in need through the district. Iroquois has been doing this helping tradition for nearly 10 years. This fundraiser is extremely important to Iroquois because all the teachers and staff want the students to be able to have a safe and happy winter season at home, but it's hard to do without the proper living essentials. So thank you for your donation and helping families in need. Thank you for giving me the wonderful opportunity to speak with you today. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alex Clark, and I represent Iroquois Middle Drama Club and the sixth grade here. As you might already know, this year, the Drama Club is putting on Aladdin Jr. All three of us in the, are in the cast and have similar roles. I play one of Aladdin's friends also, Babcack. We here at Iroquois Middle are grateful to even have a drama program, and we owe all our thanks to Mrs. Persinger, Mr. Piacente, and Mrs. Fox, who, who uh, do so much for all of our students. Drama Club to me is my second family, and I really look forward to it at the end of the day. We in the drama program raised about $4,000 for our show. And you may think that's a lot, but honestly, it's the bare minimum. As y and you may be wondering why, and that's because the IMS Drama Club is self-funded. We have to work for every dollar we get. But getting on to my other topics, safety. And boy, is that a topic. I want to congratulate everyone in this room. You have adapted these guidelines and safety regulations in the setting of school, where hundreds of kids are together at once. And I know how hard it is, but if we persevere, we can overcome any challenge, even the coronavirus. I know there are going to be kids who don't wear their mask, but there's not much else we can do except enforce the rules more. In any case, if you step back and get the bigger picture, I'd say as a school, we're doing pretty good. I mean, all things considered. And I use the words us and we because it's one community, one school. We're all united, so never forget you are not alone. Now, on a different note, my final and third topic. In December, before our winter break, to show off some school spirit, we did something called Jingle Bell Power Hour. Every student got a number, and every hour Mrs. Slade picked four numbers, one for each grade. The students who got picked went down to the office to pick up a prize. I think this really brought the school together for the holidays. It's really an honor to be here today, and I'm very thankful that I'm here to partially represent the students of Iroquois Middle. Thank you, Board of Education. Hello, my name is Eddie Jones, and I am in eighth grade. Our school's SGB, or Student Government Body, as many kind and generous activities and fundraisers. One of those activities is a fundraiser we call Candygrams. In the two weeks Candygrams are sold, when Christmas and Valentine's Day are upcoming, students can buy two Candygrams for one dollar. The grams will then be sent with a candy cane or sucker attached to other students or staff. This not only helps spread appreciation and holiday cheer, but also gives the SGB necessary funds for future projects. Additionally, I will be playing Omar in our drama club's, drama club's production of Aladdin Jr. Omar, along with Babcock and Kasim, are Aladdin's three best friends. Drama Club is a club I am proud to be a part of. It's a place where kids like us can feel comfortable and do what we love. Thank you all very much for your time and attention. Great job. Thank you very much. I do have one question before you sit down. Um, first, I'm, make sure I get in on that candy gram thing, because they know how I love the candy. And I lo loved how you said, for us, United, because we always talk about Iroquois being a family. But the real question I have is, I want to make sure I have it right, because I know they've talked about moving the musical just because of COVID and how it's taking longer to get all the lines down, because it's always such a great performance. Are the dates that you're telling us, the official new dates, and, and what were they again to make sure everyone hears them so you know, they can get their tickets and be prepared to come? February 4th, 5th, and 6th. All right. Thank you so much for making sure everyone knows that. Thank you. Sorry, I was just writing that down in my calendar. Okay. 
Thank you so much students for um, attending our board meeting and, and sharing your updates with us. It is so important to hear students' voices at our meetings. That brings us to item number six, the board discussion and news worth sharing. And the first thing that we have listed is the BOCI special meeting on April 27th. Um, and we need to discuss what time we would like to meet. I believe that this meeting is usually fairly short. It is um, uh, usually to have a, a quick discussion of, um, it's for voting for something for BOCES, am I correct? Yes, uh, what it is, um, John, and you can chime in if you want, but it's for the bo all component districts for that are involved in Erie 2 BOCES have to vote on the 27th, sometime on the 27th, to, so the BOCES can move forward with their budget. So this is where we put our vote in so that approval can go forward. This meeting is typically very short where we just, you know, do our voting for the BOCES. Um, and if there's any personnel, we might have hiring somebody, but you, that's what it's limited to. There's no discussion, um, no superintendent's report, uh, nothing with new business usually at all. And I always say usually because we never know what's going to happen today. <laughs> um, we've done them so, um, typically. What? We've done them typically in the morning is when we typically do them. And with the way the laws are right now, I was just reading it where I believe it's even extending further for virtual meetings. We, we could even do it a virtual meeting this year where typically it's not a virtual meeting. Um, everyone has to come in at a certain time, but everyone could log in and, and we could just have it be virtual too. What time works best for everyone? I like morning. Yeah, like 7.30, it's, you know, usually it's who has to go to work the earliest and we try to give them time, especially with virtual. Um, I start at six, but I can, I can get out. Okay, <laughs> well, Heather's no longer with us. Can we pick someone else? <laughs> no, I, I can take a coffee break. <laughs> um, How long is the meeting expected to be? How long is the meeting expected to be? It's usually like five, ten minutes at the most. Yeah. Anytime's fine. Oh, okay, yeah. 7.30 be fine. Or whatever time. Yeah. I haven't failed. 7.30. And, and we, 730 works for me too. And we also have the option to be in virtual as yep. well, right? Yeah, definitely so. could be virtual. I usually can't do this one, but if we do it virtually at 730, I can be there at work and do it. All right. So okay. I can do that. Yeah, because uh, I don't know then. Michelle's new schedule, and Sharon, I know you where you work, you have an earlier schedule. So if 730 works for the two of you, it sounds like a good time. Yeah. No. Okay. All right, better go. All right. The uh, second item we have is the new policy. Um, we're referring to the policy on naming, is that correct? Yes, that's it. Um, it, was, it, it was posted and uh, there's hard copies for people here. The reason for this is in looking at our policies and there, there was an article in the newspaper about naming uh, a facility we realized there was no district policy on that and we do like to have district policies covering everything so everyone's aware of what to do, regulations, procedures. Um, and so we did reach out to Erie One BOCES because they have a service that we subscribe to that has the lawyers on it. So they're aware of all the different laws, New York State laws, which we know there's a few of those. And uh, they sent us a draft copy. I did present to the board. I'm reading through it, some little tweaks I would think for Iroquois. Um, one of them was just in the committee composition to be a little more inclusive of more groups and people on it. But uh, really it's up for you guys to discuss because, you know, this is what you do. Just curious, when was the last time we I named would, something? I would, be, um, I would be willing to be on Remember? the committee. Okay, thank you. Um, it was a few time. years ago. Yeah. It, it, sure. was, it, it was quite a few years ago. Um, Pete Townsline, I, I think they named something for there because I know we have the Bob Miller okay. field. We have the, um, the Bob Jim, Wayman track. The Bob Wayman track, mm -hmm. the uh, um, quick press box, uh, Jim, Knowles. Jim Knowles Gymnasium, and uh, okay. the Latimer field. So those are the names that I know of the around here. The softball field, yeah. So before we just followed a, like a committee type thing to, or did we? No one There was, was no, there, 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 there was, was no, no you know, and, and this is. We should actually even maybe come up with a list of things that are named 
so that we can yeah. answer that question, you know, yeah, so yeah. That, that would be a good idea to yeah. start with. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering. Yeah, there really wasn't was any. Of official policy mm -hmm. before. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, that's why. No, I, I, but, I, so this is brand new? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can we remind everybody just to talk in their microphones? I'm having trouble hearing everybody clearly. Sorry. No. Okay. Jane, when you said you want to be on the committee, what, what do you mean? I didn't say that. Louise did. Louise said that. Okay. Okay. I uh, know there was a, someone that submitted a suggestion for a name of the field. And I, then I believe somebody suggested that, that we should make it a committee to decide. Well, I feel the like I feel like yeah. that yeah. We're, we're trying to come up with a, a policy for how we're going to name things in our district. Um, and I think we need to determine that policy before we'd start talking about who's going to be on a, a committee. It, it, the policy hasn't been created yet. So let's have the policy first. It's not the cart before the horse. My, that was my comment. I, thought, I was like, <laughs> I think my, my, my questions were, um, I read that there's, there's kind of three reasons behind what I'm, I'm thinking. My, I read the policy. I have to be honest, I felt like it was not very, um, I thought it left me with a lot more questions than it did answers of how we do things and how um, maybe it was just because it's more general and not as specific. So I, I feel like that was a little bit, I didn't love it with the way that it was. Then, so that led me to my next thought, which was, in, in the past when we've done a lot of things, which I, I think this is a significant undertaking. For example, when we, you know, redid the board meeting agenda or when, um, you know, the board went from one to two comment periods, we had a committee that looked into it and explored it. Like, I'd like to see other districts policies. I'd like to find out things like what are other districts' experiences with their naming, with a policy? How did it work? Any like advice from the field? Um, you know, this one had a date on it that's 15 years old. I want to see are there any new ones that people have done? So I, I kind of thought as we did when we did the agenda meeting, we had like three board members or four board members. I can't remember if it was three or four. And we three. just met, three. made a plan, went out got stuff, brought it back, went through it, talked about it, brought that th those things back to the board and said, here's kind of our weeding through, let's talk about it again. That's kind of what I was thinking. And my last one question is just, I want to make sure as we're doing this, that we're mindful of the strategic plan because a an item like this falls into communication, facilities, those kinds of things. So I feel like mm -hmm. it's a very delicate thing and I want to make sure we do it right and thoughtfully. Um, and I think we have the time to do that. So, so mm -hmm. I, I would suggest we have a group of board members get a little more information, but that's, that's where I'm at. Okay. How's the rest of the board? Does the best, ugh, sorry. Does the rest of the board, um, feel that a board committee uh, studying this for say a month um, and bringing it back next month um, is warranted and would be the, our best next step? Yeah, I agree. Chair, are you able to hear me okay? Yeah, but I, I agree with yeah, that's, everything uh, that you're saying. Or we can just name it alumni field and this way we don't hurt anybody stealing and we recognize how important our alumni are. We, we can still do that even after we have a policy, Louise. Right, we, we need to get a policy in place. <laughs> we need a policy first. And um, I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I When we were talking about this, I actually did a little bit of research and um, there are a couple of other policies out there in other districts, in other um, BOCES districts, and, um, and even in colleges, which is interesting, you know, because it brings up all kinds of different considerations. And um, I think it would be really good for instead of taking time here and then having to compile everybody's individual, you know, giving people time to think about it and really mm -hmm. consider implications going forward, that it would be good to have um, board members talk about it. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So then um, we wouldn't want more than three board members because more than three board members constitutes a quorum. And we don't need that. We, we don't want that. So we need three board members to volunteer to um, spearhead this committee. Who would like to be on it? I will. I will too. I'd like to be on it. So I just heard Chuck and Michelle and Louise. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we're going to task the three of you to come back to our next board meeting with um, different policies and maybe the workings of what our policy could look like. So we could really start working on one and having one that we could have read. What do, I, I believe we read three times before we adopt a policy. Is that correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So yep. it would be nice if we had something that we could start working with next month. Is that too soon? Well, I think it's a nice goal, but if the committee gets together and right. says they need more time, I think we would definitely need to give them yeah. more time. Okay. There's no rush. <laughs> I'm good with that, too. There's no rush. Yeah. Right? It's not an emergency? All no, right. It's not no, a rush. That's no, why I'm saying it's, it's, it's not. I want to make sure we That's why I'm putting in there. Enough. Make sure we have plenty of time to do all the yeah. research and look. I mean, if we have something... You know, we certainly yeah. could present it, but... Yeah. And it might be just an update. You know, this is what yeah. we've done. This is what we've collected. We've... Oh, and then, Jane, okay. we can, we anyway. can certainly yeah. keep you updated on that, you know, should anything need mm -hmm. to be added to the agenda regarding that for next month. I, I didn't hear what Chuck said. Oh, I'm sorry. I said we, we could keep you abreast of our progress so that if we did need to add that to the agenda for next month, we could do that or hold yeah. off. So. Okay. That sounds good. Um, and I, I guess, Jane, I'm looking at you for your other role. Would the uh, Erie County Association of School Boards be, have any of this information of where they might have it from all the schools? Um, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, we have access to uh, the same board, board policy kinds of things that, that you have through okay. Erie One BOCES. No, uh, that's fine. Because Policy Nora, services. No, we'll get um, So to, the information that I would get would probably be the same information that, that you already have. That's fine. And Nora then will reach out to other school districts. We do have board docs now that she can look in. So we have different Great. resources there. Great. Um, and then Nora will reach out to, to maybe Carrie. Maybe Carrie could help look into some of this too. Well, right? I would ADs. I would hesitate to ask the AD to do that because it's not just an athletic. Obviously, the the pressing thing is is the upcoming thing that we'll be naming would be the field, but it's not. This policy isn't just for athletics; it's for district wide. No, I know. I, yeah, so. I know. I'm just wondering. My, one of my questions was. Um, does everybody name their fields that are their new multi-purpose fields? And so she, I thought she might have access to that. Goodness. That's a good question. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm noticing that I have a dog in the background. <laughs> um, so uh, that takes care of the policies. Does anyone else have something that they would like to share under board discussion before I jump in with a couple of things? I would. I'd like to share that I um, met with the high school principal as the ambassador, and he's loving Iroquois, says the kids are all wonderful, of course. And um, anyway, it, to be serious, um, he really has a just a wonderful perspective and um, is jumping into the Iroquois culture, really like embedding himself into yeah. um, working with the faculty and staff and kids. And um, he's even going on the senior trip, mm -hmm. which is pretty awesome for him. Um, Anyway, it was just really nice to have a conversation. He appreciates all the support he's getting. Um, so thank you to um, Doug for and all of the. Oh, it's a team. And, You're right. Mary Joe and not just um, Doug, Mary yeah, Joe, yeah, yeah, John, yeah, yeah. and Everybody. even other administrators. And the that are um, tech out. department, I know, is very helpful. And um, so anyway, he just it sounds great. And he's involved in um, like iTech, and I've noticed him even at some of the sporting events. I went to the wrestling. Yeah, he's uh, at the match. wrestling He's over center. there. Yeah. You know, I've seen him at basketball games. Yeah, so you can great. definitely tell he's engaged. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. Okay. 
Um, so I have the honor of sitting on the Iroquois Foundation's Wall of Fame uh, committee as the uh, representative of the school board. And um, I was asked to announce that the 2022 nomination form is available now um, on their uh, web page and completed forms can be dropped off um, at the school district um, or emailed to our district clerk. Um, she collects them. Um, so if anybody is interested in nominating a worthy alumni, uh, the deadline is March 31st. And so you can pick up that application from the, the Iroquois Foundation's um, webpage and uh, email that in to our district clerk. Okay. Uh, that's one thing that I have. And the other is that I'd like to give a little bit of an update on what's going on over in Wales. I am the Wales ambassador and um, they have uh, been pretty busy <laughs> this past few months. Um, <clears throat> in December, they uh, were able to uh, put together a, a really neat program where the principal read uh, the Polar Express and um, the librarians worked together to create um, a, a movie with sound effects that went along as the principal read to the students, um, to the entire building and that was kind of a neat thing and then each class got to do a project and play games and whatnot um, to celebrate um, winter coming and um, they had a uh, a fourth grade uh, the fourth grade sponsored the blizzard of kindness where they actually worked um, as a class to determine staff members that would be that would uh, they would like to highlight and, and recognize for all the things that they do to make Wales um, such a great school. And each day, the students um, would give a card to the uh, staff member that they decided to honor that day. Um, so December was the Blizzard of Kindness month, and that was kind of a neat program. Um, they also have, uh, they, they did their uh, Native American uh, uh, um, unit there and they invited earth spirit to come and share with the students um, authentic Native American uh, artifacts and um, they had the students go outside and um, build shelters out of things that are available right there on the grounds and only the things that were available to them on the grounds um, so students got to learn um, truly authentic Native American culture uh, through that program. Um, there is a, t uh, a group of teachers um, that were able to have a weather station installed at Wales. And so Wales students are learning all about weather um, with um, actual weather tools at their disposal. Um, maybe the superintendent can look to Wales students to help him determine when the next uh, snow day will be. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be more than happy um, to have someone help me. <laughs> and then uh, the, uh, the principal asked for me to also acknowledge um, their custodian, Al Summers. Uh, he's always willing to do anything that will to help Wales run smoothly with so many staff out over the month due to COVID. He stepped up and offered a hand in the cafeteria with food service, in the office, delivering mail and doing any other task that needs to be done above and beyond what would normally be his duties. So we want to do a little extra shout out to Al Summers. Um, uh, so thank you, Al for doing everything you can to help keep Wales running smoothly. Okay. Anybody else? No, but I think recognizing this, the staff, like is, that's a really nice thing. Um, I know the teachers are feeling tired these days, so that might be something that we should carry forward to figure out a, a way of doing that more often possible. Thanks, Jane. All right, that brings us to the superintendent report. Mr. Schofield, I'm gonna turn it over to you. So, um, let's see, the first thing I have is test kit, test kit distribution. Right. 
So we are off on, on winter break and coming back uh, during the, well, actually during the break, there was an announcement made by New York State that they would be providing school district with, with test kits. So on Sunday the 3rd, Iroquois held a COVID test kit distribution. New York State provided the kits and everyone that came to pass them out was voluntary. So really appreciate, again, you mentioned recognizing teachers, so teachers were there, administrators were there. So it was great to have them come and volunteer because it was really last minute. I actually drove down um, New Year's Day Saturday to Fredonia to get the test kits so we'd have them in time so the announcement could go out at five o'clock to the parents to make sure we had them on site. So, and it went very well. Uh, the parents came in, they were very appreciative. It, 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 was, it, was, it was nice to see everyone. Um, and they didn't spend more than 15 minutes here. They were in, they were out, so that was great too. Um, let's see. Uh, to see the to, to, to volunteers on Sunday provide the, uh, so these kits what they did is they enabled all the families that picked them up to test their children Sunday night Monday morning before they came to school so and then for people who aren't, weren't able to make it in we also afforded that they could send in a note and pick up some test kits on Monday some people forgot so we also had that on Tuesday after Tuesday at noon, what we did with some of the kids, with the kids remaining, is we provide them for teachers and staff so they could test themselves. So, you know, why wait till Tuesday? Well, one of the reasons we had to wait till Tuesday is what we received from the state was 2,108 kits. It was actually a little less than that, but I, I did ask for more. I'll say, I don't want to say I was vocal, but uh, I, I did say we don't ha we have more students than you you gave us. So I want one for every student. And um, they provided them to us. And what we gave out to students was 1,450, which is roughly 69% of the students in attendance. The teachers and staff, 250 were taken, which does leave kits left over. And what we're using those kits for is test to stay. So when New York State put out what we could use them for, it was distribution to parents or test to stay. So we really wanted people to test before they came here. I thought that was a good idea. We did have, uh, let's see. 71 individuals remain home from testing. So when you saw the, the first week, it was about 109 people, we'll say, total for the first week. 71 of them were the first day. And it, it makes me sad that you know people are getting COVID and, and contracting it, but it also was very glad that people took the time to be proactive and not come in. That's the biggest thing for not having the spread, not having transmission here at Iroquois, is staying home when you have signs and symptoms. Of the 71, I do track them all. Majority of them did have signs or symptoms, so I would have been hopeful they would have stayed home anyways. But it's really nice for parents to be able to know immediately for their child what is happening. Um, let's see. Gonna go, and it, it's nice, too, because you don't have to travel and take them out in the car anywhere if they're sick because you've tested at home. Um, really, and I think this number is just, it's just a part of what's going on with COVID, with the new variant in Western New York, New York State, and nationally. I don't think it's anything that's happening in Iroquois that, that anyone's doing anything wrong. I think it's just part of what's happening. But as part of what's happening, we do need to be smart. We, we need to think of what we're doing. Um, you heard one of the students speak earlier about making sure you're wearing your mask, keep the social distancing. These are the things that we need to do to continue that. And I, I do have it in my messages and I hope people people listen to that and are really thoughtful and think safely because um, that makes the huge a huge impact uh, let's see what you can do is self monitor the surges and and what the surge is doing um, is it, not only impacting students also impacting staff um, so with that if your student comes home I know in the high school they had to put a couple of classes together I believe it was in the auditorium this might happen just with the number of people, number of subs we have. We're going to talk about subs in a little bit here, trying to get more. But, uh, you know, a huge thank you to the staff for pr providing the extra coverage, for doing that extra mile, because I did talk to my student cabinet, and, and we talked about virtual learning or in-school learning, and everyone on the cabinet really said the students, they want to be in school. They, they, they want to be in school, and it's that social interaction, that mental health that really makes the difference. Um, so the administration, the nurses, constantly doing additional work with the new cases and implementing the test to stay. Um, 
So I'm going to move on to test to stay if that's okay, because it really leads into that with this many people out, we really didn't have any contact tracing the first week with everyone being out, but now that we're in the second week, we have contact tracing because there are still people coming down with new cases of COVID, and so then we look for contact tracing around them. Test to stay allows the close contacts to stay in school. So if you're vaccinated, you, you, you don't have to quarantine. We notify you, we let you know you're a close contact within the three feet or if it's with an adult within the six feet. But if you are not vaccinated, then you're able to go into the test to say this is a parent choice. It, it's not mandatory, you can, you can stay home for the amount of time or you can test. Well, how it works is we determine close contact, we contact the parents, provide them the choice, and over the five days, you have to test twice, with one of them being on the fifth day. So it's between the first and the fourth, so we try to get a test right away. Um, we've already started doing this. We started giving tests, well, we officially started giving tests on Wednesday, but we did have some close contacts, so we did test for safety reasons. Some people right there on that Monday, the nurses went out of their way to help that. Um, and you have to test before entering the school. Uh, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to say with test to stay. We have had three individuals in the test to stay um, be found positive. So I want to say it, it is working. We are finding the people, which then allows them to be in quarantine because the whole thing is to have people be safe here at school. And, and this is a huge step with that. Um, Can I ask a question? Yeah. Okay. Um, when we were hearing about test to stay originally, what, and maybe I was wrong, but what I was hearing was that all five days the students would be tested. And then I know that it came out from Erie County and we're following Erie County guidance. Mm -hmm. I do understand that. I'm just wondering if in your conversations they talked about why that is. Is it, uh, is it only twice because of test availability or is there some medical? I don't know. Because I'm in my head, you're, I'm thinking you test day one, you don't test till day five what if on day three so i'm just wondering if they talked about that i, I actually had the same question because you know if you're saying it takes three to five days to incubate and you test on day one or two and it's three to five days well why wouldn't it be test on day three and day five or something like that um never never really got that answer um when we meet with the department of health um we have to type our questions in and they get to as many as they can um and that's the process, but that was one, I, I was shocked to see that. I, I was actually thinking exactly what you were thinking. I had gears up with the nurses of what it would be to test every single day, how many people looking at different aids um, for that, but the allocation that was given and what they put out, um, they did not go into detail on that, I'm sorry. So is there like guidance, so you test on the first day, and then what happens on day three when you start feeling bad? Can you test again? Or do you have to wait till day five? It, well, no, if, if any time in this great, that's probably the best question of all of them that everyone needs to hear the Thank answer you. to. Thank <laughs> you. If at any time you're in quarantine, you start to have symptoms, you're immediately pulled out of quarantine and you go into some, that someone has signs or symptoms and you need to get tested. It goes back to what we just said a minute ago, like with the 71 people testing. Any time you have signs or symptoms, vaccinated, not vaccinated, in quarantine, not in quarantine, you need to get tested. Um, the only exception would be if you've had COVID and you're in that 90 day window. But, but if anyone's gonna remember anything, if you have signs or symptoms, stay home and get tested. That's what everyone needs to remember. Go ahead, I see you have a question. So <laughs> it's if easy, they stay if home, they get tested. <laughs> if they test negative because it's winter in Buffalo and they just have a sniffle and they test negative, they can still come to school? They would be able to come to school, yes. Okay. Now, what, New York, what Erie County has in place, and I, and I, I don't understand this either, um, if you do an at-home kit and you test positive, you have COVID. If you do an at-home kit and you test negative, it doesn't count. You need to go to a facility, it doesn't matter what type of test the facility, the, you know, the pharmacy, the Department of Health thing gives you. They can give you an antigen, a PCR, a NAT test. And if that's negative, then you're negative. Um, it, it's something that we're trying to figure, we're, we're having discussions with, 
to see what the difference would be if you could do an at-home kit to make you positive. Why can't you do one for positive? And I understand that some people might say, well, they could do it wrong, they could do something else. Um, but let us try to figure out a way that you could prove it was done right. But as of right now, and that's a, another very important thing to know, an at-home kit can make you positive. You need to, if you have signs or symptoms, you need to go somewhere and get tested. Um, and I know they've been backed up lately, but it seems that they're getting caught back up. I know extra hours, later hours, um, other shifts have been put on for people to get tested with the surge that's going on. I think if you test positive at home, you can, you can actually report that to Erie County now. That's another important right? thing, too. If you test positive at home, please, please, and I'm going back and forth, and I, I know our nurses are telling it, report it to Erie County. Because when you report it to Erie County, that records that you had COVID, and that enters you into the 90-day window for later. If you don't report it to Erie County, you would still stay home in isolation from us because you've told us you have COVID. Um, but it, afterwards, if you have signs or symptoms, according to Erie County, you would still have to go get retested. So if you're, because there's some question on how accurate these rapid tests are. Um, in fact, on the back of the box, it says, this could be, if you have COVID, it could be a false negative, go get a PCR test, right? So if you're positive on a quick test and you go to get a PCR test and you're negative, then what? So if you do an at-home test, you're positive, and then you go get a PCR test and you're negative, they go, Erie County goes by the second test, the PCR test. Okay, good. Thank you. Yep. And just Can I just like, clarify what you just said, too? Yeah, that, go ahead. That, yeah, that... Like, that's the first time I've heard that. I want to make sure people hear that because I've heard a lot of people ask, why do they have to report it to Erie County? Because it's, they, they shouldn't have to know. So it is to their advantage yeah. because then it enables them to be counted into that 90 day. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, that's it's your prerogative to report it or not report right. it. But I, you know, I don't often talk about me personally, but I know I would report it. Not because I want Erie County to know what's going on with me, but because of the 90-day window that follows after it. Right. I don't think because I've you, ever heard you, you that before, so thank false, you. You can have the COVID in you during that time period and have tests and still test positive because of the antibodies or whatever else is here. I'm not quite sure how that works, but that's what I've been told by the medical people in the medical field that in that 90-day window you can have positives that um, when you really don't have COVID. And my last question is, is right now the test to stay, is it um, stressing the nurses out that we have in, at school to do additional work, or are they managing the workload okay so far? I mean, I it's only been maybe a week, but, I mean, do we need... I don't know if we can stress them out anymore. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, because of where, where they are with COVID and everything. Um, just that reporting, the tracing, because they still... What people have to remember, before COVID, we didn't have people sitting around saying, what should I do today? People had full jobs that took their day, and now we added all the work and reporting with COVID on it. We put the, for on the teachers the extra work for students that were at home and meeting with them. For the administrators, the contact tracing, meeting with the teachers. For central office, everything that we have to do to support them. For the nursing staff, the tests, the calling of home, the calling of parents, because we make contacts. So Monday, there were 71 students that made a phone call in here, made contact with, that were communicated to. That wouldn't have happened before. And if you figure every you know, phone call is five minutes, do the math, that, that's a huge increase of time that countless yeah. people are, are, are. It's more than five minutes. They, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're very thorough. They're very professional. Yep. They're really trying to give you. And, and then on top of it, parents are concerned that they're following the rules so then they have this discussion right yep, it's absolutely the, the the lack of clarity is <laughs> definitely yes. chuck that's a blank. good word <laughs> nothing positive yeah but these these are great questions to get and remember this is recorded so people at home please have other people tell people watch this part of the the board meeting and I know people have questions because I have staff, nurses, principals, all day, every day calling me just for clarity. Because, I mean, you would think after a few cases, they'd all be the same. 
but there's a lots of different nuances that go on with it um, that we're constantly talking about and getting clarity. And, and then, you know, I don't want to say every day, but I do call the Department of Health quite regularly to get help or, or you know, what is the exact thing on this piece. Um, so I've got some good friends there now. <laughs> Whoops, couldn't hear you. Re oh, moving on to the next one. <laughs> Regents exams, they're canceled. No, uh, so January, the uh, New York State Department of Education canceled their Jan only the January at this point, Regents exams. Um, they also stated that these days must be regular days of attendance. And we'll go on to the next one. Uh, SCD graduation requirements. I'm going to let Mary Jo talk about this because I'm talked out. <laughs> so prior to um, the COVID outbreak, SCD has been running or had been running sessions of uh, constituents. So parents, community members, uh, business leaders, administrators, teachers to across the state to determine whether or not the graduation requirements for students are the correct requirements. And unfortunately, we had two meetings um, and then the outbreak happened. So what is happening now is they're, re, um, they're going to be reestablishing those meetings and they've already begun across the state. Erie 1 and Erie 2, well, actually it's the JMT, so it's all of Western New York will be meeting at the end of January. It's going to be held virtually. Um, and right now, it, I'll be attending as well as some administrators from the high school. And we'll just keep it posted. And the next thing is talking about staffing, specifically substitutes. John does a great eye at looking at other districts so we can be competitive. Um, John, what are you proposing for us? So later in the meeting, um, we've, we've met um, over the last couple of months, I would say, and, and typically in a school district, a business administrator, me, I'm always trying to keep those costs down and trying to fight to keep everything lower. And the administrators ex explain how they're having a hard time getting people in our building and how we're not competitive with our rates with other districts. So we did look at all the surrounding districts around us for sub-teachers, specifically sub-teachers, um, and we were pretty low. And you know, years ago, $100 a day was kind of the standard for everybody. But at this point, $100 a day is really, when you divide it by 7.5 hours in a day, that's minimum wage, really. So um, we were at 120. 120. So that was that was an increase for sure, but it's, this is not where other districts are. Um, we are proposing new rates this evening uh, in a new business section, and we are not going to be the highest for sub rates, but we won't be the lowest. Uh, and we, we think we're right competitive with our neighbors around us. Uh, we we even spoke with some of the subs that were being interviewed, and and, and when we, when they didn't come to us after being interviewed, and we liked them, we wanted to sub in our district. We did get the feedback that there are other districts just paying quite a bit more than us, and we were losing people because of that. So um, we definitely need people in our building. We need staff desperately. So uh, it's the time now to, to increase some of those rates. Uh, the hey, next thing. Oh, uh, Whoop, sorry, I have on, a question sorry. about the sub um, rates. So, like the um, the buildings, the daily building subs. Is there? So, having been in this position recently mm. as a daily sub, um, it, it becomes very apparent, like, if you have a daily sub and they're coming every single day, is there, you know, if there's a snow day, they don't get paid, right? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, which I know that they're daily subs and they they took that on but in this environment is it maybe it's something we could look at in in well, in ensuring that, that we may we we keep those people yes the only know? risk is that we you know it's it's though we call them daily they could still we, we can, it goes both ways that we can stop that that uh relationship any time so we don't want to pay them for a long break and then they don't come back after that or you know right and we could you know maybe I, I mean 
this is this is um, future looking, just something mm -hmm. to consider, and um, you know it would that those kinds of things would need to be addressed, of course. You know, just, just times throwing are it changing. Out there. Yeah, times are changing. Yeah. And um, I know that there's shortages in other areas of the school, like our bus drivers and things. Are we going through a similar exercise for them or not yet we, at this point? We feel those rates are competitive right now. We're, mm -hmm. we're, it's hard to get every district struggling with drive, getting drivers. So yeah. we're kind of right in there. And with our rates, we think we're com pretty competitive with the area. So nothing okay. yet on those. Okay, great, thanks. Anything else? All right, the next one is the uh, Safety Social Media Committee. And, and what this came about, um, social media has really taken a turn in how it impacts. And I, as an administrator, um, has to, and I actually had a conversation with a lot of other superintendents today about it. We have to change our thinking around this and how it's addressed. Um, even though I don't think social media is a really credible source for a lot of information, it doesn't really matter what I think or I feel. It matters what other people are reading into it. Right, and it, it can be. It can oh, be. Oh, can be. There, there are, yeah, right? by all means, I'm not saying there's bad, that it's all bad. Um, and that's one of the points I like to point out. There are very good things, very ways of connecting and communicating and passing on information on it. It's when it takes the other turn that we have to look at. And address. Right, and when you have a reliable controlled source, then it could be a reliable source. And I would say the district Facebook would Correct. be a good reliable source. Yeah, so that's, that's a great example of what you're saying. Excellent choice. <laughs> excellent choice for people to read. Media. Um, so we had our first meeting. We had administrators, teachers, and the SRO at this. The goal is to have the school safer by discussing the impact of social media and, and other concerns that were brought that, that are brought up in the meeting. Um, it's based on the impact of social media and other modern technologies. So it's not just social media. What are the other things that are happening and what technologies can we use to make children safer? So what we did at the first meeting, we spent a couple hours, just everyone came in with ideas and we brainstormed ideas. What are all the bad things? What are, all, you know, we, I said, we're going to walk out not feeling great about things. And we just put everything that we could put possibly on there. It doesn't mean we're done. We might find more. And then we categorized them. So what we're going to do with the next meeting, we're going to put them all together in the categories, get them out to the committee so they can start thinking of the impact and what would have the greatest impact. And then as a group, they're going to decide which one to hit first. Some of the categories was communication during the incident, which is part of our strategic plan. The facilities, what resources they have, which is part of the strategic plan. Training, policies, procedures during incidents, what do we have there? And so what we're going to do is meet review these, pick one of the categories we think is the first one we should start with, and then we're going to start developing solutions. So I will keep the board updated. I did get a couple emails or feedback from the people on it. They were very pleased um, with just the openness that this is being addressed and taken care of. And uh, so we'll keep moving forward and you'll keep getting reported, reported to about this. <laughs> Any questions? Is that is, who are the members of the committee? Did you say that and I missed it? I'm sorry. Uh, teachers, administrators, and SRL. We have elementary, middle school, high school representatives. Um, um, obviously from law enforcement, we have the school resource officer, he's on there. I sit there and, and kind of, and I'll say I listen because I really try to get information out of them because how I see things is one way, but if they're out there in the field, and watching the students, it's very important to know what, what they think. So we spent a lot of time doing that. And then we I, have principals and assistant a, principals. I, I, I'm thinking about our strategic plan and involving the student experience. Is this something that at some point students can come and either meet with the committee? Because you know, they know it better than we know it. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. We, and we want to start or beyond the, in it yeah. or somehow. We want to start with the teachers. Um, Number one, because they're the ones that, in, in the most recent ones, that need to have, they're, 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 the, they're the ones taking care of it, so where are they able to do it? And then we, and actually, not only the students, but then also want to reach out to the community, because one of the things we talked about is internal communication and external communication. So we're also going to have to reach out to parents as part of this as we work through these different areas, or your, wherever you are. Any other? 
I'm, I'm really happy that this is starting. Um, and I think it's really important to get the teacher's input and the you know, SRO's input, and, and that's really important. I also think it would be a really beneficial thing to reach out to a communications professional or someone who is familiar with safety and um, social media and technology, um, or, or just a communications professional, and and see their perspective because they will, you know, just like the teachers have perspective that they probably don't see. Um, adults don't look at social media like kids do, and they don't see what's coming, and it it would. It could prevent going down a path that you maybe don't need to go down or open up some ideas that um, you haven't thought of because we're in education, you know, we're not in communication. Absolutely. And that is an entirely, it, it's a huge field. And I, I just, tr and I think that's in alignment with the strategic plan. Absolutely, and I'll take that back right to the committee. I'll say here are one of the options you could use. Just to, just to have a resource, just like we're looking at the policy and looking at what other districts are doing, maybe also reaching out to other districts. How are they managing social media? And, you know, why reinvent the wheel? Absolutely, and I think <laughs> it's ironic. Um, I, I like having Wednesdays the same meetings I meet with superintendents because this, I presented the word what we're doing here and there really was a lot of interest from other districts about what we're doing here and they're like, ooh, like they're thinking of, well, what should we do here? What are you exploring down? So I will keep talking to them, working with them, but uh, having that resource. And I, I like what you said there, how students look at it differently social media, because I did talk to my student cabinet yesterday about this committee and kind of try to get their thoughts so I could relay some of that on to the committee. And I said, you know, here are conversations that should not, words that should not be said anymore. And I said, how do you feel about this? And they said, well, you know, Mr. Schofield, sometimes people just on social media need to blow off steam. And I'm like, well, but there's words you can't say. There's topics you can't cross. And so we had, we had an in-depth conversation with that. And, and these are, my student camp is made up of a, a well mix of people. And, and it wasn't, you know, it, 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 was, it was very interesting and eye-opening to me to hear some of that of where I would look at things very differently. And they do understand how things have to be addressed seriously when they're put there, but they do view using of it, the use of it very different, which gets to me of education and training as part of it, which is, um, what I brought back to the committee and they said that's it and that's where I think students will be very key important of this of them understanding about it So Absolutely, I, I love that point you said Anything else about this with the social the committee? Um, budget sessions John we're back to you uh, John Whoops. sorry hang on um, one question was so this committee was formed is this, does this have to do with the Google discussion? No, it has had nothing to do with the Google discussion at all. Oh, okay. This, this had to do strictly with safety. This was the this was other thing that different. happened. This was completely different. another yes. committee and how, how people got on this committee. Yeah, As okay. I said, who would like to be on it and everyone that said they'd like to be on it, we put on it. Okay. Are you talking about that? Oh, I wasn't. I gave the last update um, in the Friday memo and um, I mean, I can if you want. I can give an update. You know, I, I just have a question about yeah, that, just because it was it wasn't super clear about what the next step is. Um, trying to remember exactly what it is. It was kind of like you. Do you remember you, Mary Jo? What the next step is? He met with them. They're okay. She's going to pull that up on her email, and yeah, I'll go ahead. on. John Thank will talk you. about the budget. That'll be quick, and then okay. she'll have that up. Thank you. Uh, yes, we do have a budget presentation scheduled. Um, they're going to be fantastic as always. And, <laughs> and you know, and we laugh, John, because be <laughs> we're so excited to come to it. <laughs> but we will start those next month, February 9th. We hope in the next couple of weeks we will get uh, New York State's state aid numbers. That's a, a very important piece of the puzzle when we put the budget together. Uh, so we want to see what those numbers are and. Um, we expect those in the next couple weeks. So February 9th is the first uh, presentation at the start of the board meeting. Uh, April 6th will be the next one. On May 10th, we do our budget hearing, which is required seven days before the vote. 
So of course, seven days later, May 17th is when the actual vote for the budget will take place. And, and uh, of course, when we do these presentations, they're all available, available online the next day um, at our website. And while she's reading that, anything with the budget sessions? Because while she's reading that, I'll go on to the next topic and then we'll end with Google. All right, the next one is about the fire hall. I, I presented the idea to the public at, Janu at the January, or this is January, the December meeting. And so just to review that quickly, what by purchasing that, what would that allow us to do is centralized buildings and grounds, replacement of temporary structures from the 1960s, increased plowing efficiency, reducing overtime, greater access to athletic fields, better maintenance and care of equipment, uh, safety for students because it would provide an evacuation location. Um, it, it would present uh, opportunities for facilities to support future instructional initiatives, plus the relocation of back office operations. And I'm going to focus on the back office operations right now because that's something that would be immediate. And the architect states that a new classroom to build costs between five hundred and six hundred thousand dollars. Um, that came from our architect. So by freeing one more room, this, I don't want to say savings to the district because all we, we just, we spend taxpayer monies. But by having a fire hall and moving one back operation over there, that would reduce the need to build a room. The agreed upon purchase price for the fire hall is $470,000. Uh, that amount um, is what's going to be presented during the May vote for voters to vote on. They have to pass it in order for us to move forward with the purchase. But by moving that, just by accomplishing moving that one back office operation and creating a better space for student experience, which is also part of the strategic plan, and we'd actually be looking to do that in STEM, which is um, science, technology, engineering, and math. And therefore, it would have that benefit immediately, plus everything else I stated about the, the different maintenances and everything. Um, John, um, tax impact if we were to purchase this? Uh, we plan to use um, um, fund balance uh, that we have at the end of the year. We, t we typically fund our capital reserve, but we would re reallocate some of that money to pay for this purchase. So there would be no, in no tax impact uh, in our budget for this purchase. So if I was to interpret that, if I was to interpret what you said to make sure everyone understands and please ask questions, instead of putting the money into a reserve to do a building project later on, we would use the money to purchase a building so we would never have to do the building project. Directly, yeah, so there's no uh, debt service issued for it. It was just paid off uh, right away through our uh, use of um, end of your fund balance. So either way, that money would be going towards Facilities, correct. Um, and for you know, for the construction, I did ask the architect. I said, go over, review the building, go through it, which he's done. Look to it for um, SED compliance, uh, safety inspection, and everything else, because it's a great brand new building, and they took immaculate care of it. But we have different regulations at being a school. I wanted to make sure it, it met all those. He said it did absolutely, and I said, well, what would be the cost be? And he said it'd be at least double, if not triple, the purchase price if we were to construct that ourselves. Um, so there, therefore, you know, what I'm recommending is the purchasing of, to the public, I'm putting it out to the public. Um, well, actually, you're putting it out to the public. I'm going to recommend it to you as one of the propositions that you would put out to the public, to be clear. Therefore, purchasing the fire hall at a cost of seven, or sorry, four hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Four hundred. Let me get that right. Four hundred and seventy thousand um, dollars. Immediately, um, for the current investment, protects school equipment, creates efficiency, and provides an increase for student instructional experience. Um, plus, there's also things that would provide for for the future um, in space and everything over there. Are there any questions on that? Um, there's quite a bit of acreage as well, right? Uh, six acres, yes, correct, That's absolutely. Great. And is there a, we haven't talked about the plan for the building. Uh, I, I couldn't hear you, sorry. The, the plan for the building, like we're going to purchase it. So the plan for the building, what we would do, what we would do for immediate and then long range, we, we could do other things like long range, you, you could modify it for transportation if we wanted another garage over there. But immediately we would um, 
look to consolidate buildings and grounds to okay. increase efficiency there. Okay. Have a place for the equipment so we can maintain that and move a back office operation over there to free up a classroom. And so that's therefore the, we, like maintenance back office? Is that what you mean? Or is it like what is a back office? It, it, it would be one that's over in the high school. Um, so we'd free up space over there. So therefore, um, what we could do there is now have another room allocated right down the hallway where um, the, the, um, engineer, the engineering, the wood shop classes where STEM shops are to create a STEM room over there um, to keep putting towards and building towards the STEM, the initiative that we have going on. I have a question. Go ahead. I have a question. Um, is, so do you have a, uh, an actual plan written up with all the things that are going to be done with the building and uh, like a time period and a cost, if any? Uh, I, I don't have, what I have is my plan, what it'll be, it'll be in the pre budget presentation that John will be doing in the upcoming meetings. And what I have done is expressed it to the, the public at last meeting and this meeting. We... So it'll be in the budget I have a presentation. Question too. Yes. Um, <clears throat> is there any point where the property line of the fire hall is actually joined to the property line of Iroquois, or is the Boys and Girls Club completely cut the two from one another? The Boys and Girls Club is squarely in the middle between where we're building the construction, the, the new athletic field. Um, it does join the property, the 11 acres that we own over there already. So it's adjacent to some property we own. And, and we do have a great relationship with the Boys and Girls Club because we, you know, with them I wanted to talk to them about being able to move back and forth across the properties. Um, and they're very open to that. Okay, good. So in total, we'll have 17 acres. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have a little over 17 acres. Yeah. So I think it's 11.8 is the That's other great. one. That's great. Yep. And that really provides a lot of opportunity for the future over there. If you think if we ever have to construct a different building, you have quite a bit of acreage over there. Um, fields, um, parking lots. Um, bus garage. Bus garage, yes. Which would open up a lot of space. They would open a lot of space campus. here, which would allow yeah. the pool. main campus for, for, I mean, it just, it goes on and on. <laughs> right, that would be a perfect place for a new pool. Oh, it, that would be a great place for a pool, yeah. yeah. Right. Just throwing it out there. But we have the facilities committee to help out with that one. Now we're dating. All right. So can we get, uh, sorry, I don't want to move on. I want to get back to Google, so I can't remember what it was. Okay. But any other questions on that? But it will be part of the budget presentation. There will be documentation that's posted to the website so everyone can see that and ask questions. Okay, you ready? Um, so based upon the um, synopsis that we received, uh, the committee uh, wants to do some additional fact finding, wants to do a, a teacher survey, uh, look at the um, some budgeting that we've had regarding particular programs and software. And so what they want to do is they want to spend some time collecting this data and organizing it, discussing it, evaluating it, and then meeting with Doug and myself to review it. And um, in the last, the last line from um, Ken was that the, that the committee really doesn't want to place a deadline or a specific timeline. They want to take their time and do this so that but, everyone understands. Right, it. but in saying that too, if I remember right, didn't they want to come to present to the board? And I almost want to say the February one, or? I'm not seeing that in here. Okay, because I know there's talk of coming to present to the board because in there too is, and I remember this, and why I have a, a, a little faster timeline in my mind is because part of, part of what's in there in one of the emails states that they, one of the things they're probably going to be asking for this year to the board is more funding for software. Right, and okay. that's, so that's that has the, to be into the so process I, before the budget. I'm confused though because Google is not software, right? That that my understanding of the request was that they were asking for access to help them deliver curriculum 
in a way that would be beneficial and, and, and support curriculum that we've purchased and, and have um, information you know, available to them without having to modify everything before presenting it. So I'm curious as to, it's, I just, I wanna, um, I guess, I'm concerned a little bit in that we are making decisions on curriculum based on the technology we, we currently have instead of making decisions for curriculum and using technology to support that. You know, we're, we're saying like, we are, we have this technology so we can't do this curriculum work. Instead of going, this is the best curriculum for students and we need technology to support that. That's, I, I'm just a little worried about that. And I think that's, your worry is exactly what they're looking to address because it wasn't, when they did the survey, it came back, it wasn't just Google that they were looking for. So let me ask you, let me answer your first question. Google for me as a lay person when I'm at home is completely free. In order to have it implemented in a school, there are certain safety protocols and monitoring that have to be done. I, and I know, I use it. In yeah. school. And that's, and in that's, school. Right, right, and that's where... Yeah. You right. using a school, they're paying for that service and having people Correct. take care of. So that's where the cost comes in, because you ask about the co you know it's a software, but it, it's not really a software. I think right. was the word used. So that's where the cost. A comes license, in. maybe. Licensing. There you go. Okay. Perfect. And so what they discovered, and, and because Mary Jo is going to jump in here too, and by all means go ahead, is there are other resources that people want to use from the technology budget that they're currently not having. And I think, and Mary Jo will correct me, is the committee wants to take into account everybody before they say, all right, we have so much money to spend, we want to allocate it for the best that we can do for the entire district, rather than for a certain area, a certain grade level, or anything. They want to be equitable. Am I getting that close? Right, so the question is, we have a certain, we have a certain budget, and um, we have these needs. And we do our very best to meet the needs with our budget. But when new technologies arise or new software arises, decisions have to be made regarding what takes precedence. Is it something for the elementary level? Is it something for the high school level? And so what the committee is trying to determine is where are we? They want to get greater teacher input because we want, always want to increase the, cer the number of, of people responding to our surveys. And they also want to work in the current budgeting and look at what we're currently purchasing. Because we have software um, that there are some who would love access to all of, you know, we want, we want as many people using it as possible, but if we were to purchase it for everyone and everything, our, our budget would explode. So that's what, we're, that's what they're currently working on, is they want to collect that data, they want to get input from the teachers, and then they want to sit down and analyze it, and, and then help us create some kind of protocol that they believe would be a fair protocol. Can I make a comment? And I was not here when we talked about Google before, but I really feel like I've, I, I think I sent this comment in writing to some people, but I feel as the request came in for access to things through Google, and I know I am a teacher, I teach in a district where I have access to both Microsoft and Google. Mm -hmm. And up until really the pandemic hit, honestly, my experiences, a lot of my training, a lot of things I did, I did in Microsoft and I understood Google and it felt like a choice. Um, when we went remote, and I know that we've looked at who in Erie County is using which one, but I would suggest that that is not, that may be fitting with the national trend 
every, what happened was teachers relied on teachers. Teachers helped teachers to survive figuring out materials, what to use. The amount of free materials that people put on the internet and shared with each other was something I've never experienced in all my years of teaching. And the majority of it was in Google. And having the choice then being a fully remote teacher, teaching two sections, a day, two classes a day remotely, everything that I was using was in Google. So I know that we have a lot of teachers who have embraced Microsoft before, but some of the new things that we're finding and sharing, even down to the level of what teachers are doing, we know our teachers are stressed. We know teachers are accessing things like each other, teachers pay teachers. The majority of that is Google. And so it was when this request came and I felt like it's timely and it was shifted for me. Like my mind was changed. I think what's out there is very much so. And I know we keep shifting to software, but I don't want to let go of this idea of how much is it actually going to cost to give people access to both. That, that, that's kind of where I'm at because will it help somebody to do their job? And if it will help anybody to do their job, then it, it could be beneficial knowing we have a budget and not willing to throw money away, but living in the trenches, I can't help but go to my own experience with this. It, it's Google. And so when I hear people asking for it, I want to say, like, let's really think about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And the other part is I really appreciate surveying teachers, but unless you're living in that every day and know what you need, you may not know what you don't know that you need is what I find. Like it was survival. And so if you ask me what I wish I had, I might not have known until I needed it. And so I, I really, I really think this is an important decision and I'd really love to see like the, the numbers of how much it would actually cost to give that tool. So. And, and it, I like your point, Sharon, about you don't know what you don't know, right? So uh, there was a time when I was using Google and I, I could not stand it. Like it was frustrating, it was clunky, it was, but in the past two years over the pandemic and, and that was in, um, I was using it in private industry, right? Now working in education and um, being able to collaborate with teachers at any district or to put a lesson together together in real time and see what's happening. And um, that is how teachers are collaborating across districts, across the country. Um, and curriculum is being delivered that way. And it's just, it. the pandemic forced us to move forward quickly with technology. And, and, and I also use Outlook and I use Teams to no, communicate. I, and I understand so it, what you're it's saying. A, it's a nice mix. Yeah. I understand what you're saying, but... Um, well, this, uh, I think an important point to remember, too, is Mary Jo, are, Mary jo and I are not sitting on this committee at all. No. It's made up of teachers who volunteered, a lot of them. I, 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 anyone that applied to it was on it, so the people who are interested in Google that were contacting you, I think all of them, if not a majority of them, are on this group. And... I'm sitting back here waiting to see exactly what they would say, exactly what you say, the people who are using it, what do they want to use, um, and, and waiting for the response to come out of the, re the report. Um, and you guys will probably, you know, I saw Mary Jo said, you know, we're going to be updated on it, but the findings from the committee are going to come right to you with, you know, no change or swaying by Mary Jo or myself at all. It's, it's really coming from yes. the teachers working with Ken. And Question. I, the point, I guess, Question. somewhat is if um, the education suite is different than mm -hmm. what you use at home. Absolutely. It's completely different, right? Absolutely. Um, so I know that several of us here use it and mm -hmm. have access to it and will be happy to show people what it looks like um, just to have an idea because it, it, it's – to make those decisions without access to it and to seeing what you're what you could have access to or what you need or what you don't need 
um, and how it works. Like I know that um, some of the features of Google are um, less desirable than others, and you can, you know, eliminate that stuff. Just, um, yeah. I just. I will, I will tell Ken of, of that offer. I do know that a lot of times for presentations, they have the people from BOCES come out that are the trainers in it to show everything that can be done. That's an um, excellent idea. They're phenomenal. Yeah, and that's, that's typically you know, I, and, and they are the people that come, and they do show us a lot of Google tools. You, Jamboard is not having – there's a lot of things that don't have an equivalent. And maybe, maybe me saying this – you know, if I'm speaking to the people on that committee, they need to hear us say, just get, tell us this, tell us what you really need. There isn't an agenda, give the dollar amount and we're gonna look at the budget and see. But I really, I, I don't wanna judge what people need to do their job. They have, we really need to hear from them. Yep. And, and, and if it's both, it's both. And that's what you just said is exactly the, the charge that was given to the committee is what do you need? Remember there's a budget look at the whole district, you know, equitably. Um, and then, because and, I know that Ken, and maybe he told me verbally, but I thought it was in the email too. And I think I did put it on the Friday memo to the board of saying it could come down to where they're going to come and request more money for that part of the budget. Um, you know, and, and then you have to make decisions of where it goes and we'll rely on John to find it for us. <laughs> and then we can look and see what else we're spending money on, right? And, Abs and I that's mean, because if if one thing can do something and deliver things in a different way that is maybe more cost effective because they can do it across the entire district instead of you know piecemeal software that needs updates and that is going to like stop being supported eventually and all of that mm -hmm. stuff, which has happened to us. Um, no, uh, no other programs, but other programs, programs, other softwares. You know, you're talking yeah. about software. We went from so. finance manager to Envision. Yeah, yeah. Wind Capital. So I you mean, know. those expenses um, are kind of a different. You know, the, I don't know. Anyway, no, yeah, but, the, but was, you're absolutely right. I, that's exactly what important. the budget process is, um, and, yes. and I think that's that's one thing I really try always to have here at Iroquois is. What are we paying for that we're no longer using, or what are we paying for that we can move to something else that's yes. more efficient and would save us that's, money? Yes, that's, that, exactly. That to me is the core yes. of the budget process yes. every single year. Yes. Um, you know, where, where can we, and anywhere, I mean, can we save something? Um, what, I'll say in heating because we're putting, or, or electricity because we're putting solar panels on, and now that with that money we're not spending on the electricity, where can we use that? Yes. And it always comes back to where can we use the money to improve yeah. the instruction for students? And and I really appreciate your idea um, to have Erie 1 or Erie 2 or somebody mm -hmm. come and do a presentation because um, they're the experts in technology. We contract with them, right, yeah. for technology yeah. services. So um, we may as well use them. And, and I'll, again, I'll pass that along to the committee and, and if there's other softwares, I would think, I would hope they would do it for all, all of them. Because I know there's some that the elementary teachers are it's looking not, at too. I know, but Google, it's not a software. It's a delivery method. And if some of those softwares that people are looking at are accessible through Google, it could be combined. So that is something that is really, I mean, I think that that getting, there's a lot available that um, can be delivered through Google that might even make it easier. So just a thought. You know, you know, I keep coming back to this idea too. We keep saying that we appreciate our teachers and I think we show them that our gratitude and understanding the situation they're in by hearing what they're saying. So just, I encourage every teacher watching to make <laughs> their voices known mm -hmm. because we don't know what you need unless you say. So I think we, I think we, <laughs> and one more piece of that is when we talk about budget process, we do have a meeting every year with BOCES or Winnie Rick, Erie one, they come in, they have a listing of every, all the things that we do with them. We go through those every line by line with Mary Jo, with our tech people, we go through every program we buy from them. We said, are we using this? They have the numbers and data say, yes, you, are, you have this many people using it. 
Sometimes they say, we, you had one person using it, we call that person saying, are you really using it, do you need it? And we pull stuff off the list and add stuff. It's, a, it's an annual process we do. For example, there was one program that was being used at the elementary level that had waning, part, waning use. And questions were asked and all of a sudden it became more popular. So we actually, instead of getting rid of it, expanded it. Anything else from the board today? Or for the board? I guess it's my report, but anything else? <laughs> All right, great, great questions and everything. So we're, that's it. Um, we're moving back to Jane for the recognition of guests. Okay, so recognition of guests. I understand that we have two and the uh, slips have been passed to Mr. Speck so that he can call them to the podium. Yes, um, Jane, we do have one uh, pertaining to agenda items and one which does not pertain to an agenda item. Um, okay. I, don't know if you want uh, to ask the board if they would waive the requirement for the second one to come after at the end of our meeting or I'm okay with that if everybody else is Sharon's everybody nodding okay? yes okay yeah. great thank you um, the first individual who would like to speak is Amy Kotecki on COVID testing protocols Good evening. Can you hear me okay? Okay. My name is Amy Kotecki. I've been a teacher at Iroquois for over 21 years. This is my third time speaking to you, Mr. Schofield, and the Board of Education. Thank you for this opportunity. I just want to remind you all um, of the ongoing discrimination against those of us who refuse to take the experimental shots. Last year, um, the government coerced the public with a donut, a beer, or a lot of ticket to get the shots with the promise they were not going to contract COVID-19 or spread it. We now know this to be completely false. Just yesterday during a Senate committee hearing, Dr. Woodcock, the FDA commissioner, spoke, I quote, most people are going to get COVID, end quote. It's too bad we don't actually have a scientific study that shows the difference in severity and symptoms between those who have had the shots and those who haven't. As you know, many teachers and staff have been out due to COVID positive test results in recent weeks. Mr. Schoolfield, you must have the number of positive cases and the ratio of vaccinated versus unvaccinated. I wonder if how much um, higher that number would be if the vaccinated were made to test weekly like the unvaccinated. I want to address the protocol for faculty and staff and the use of personal time versus COVID days. If one has to take time off due to COVID, positive or exposure and quarantine if unvaccinated. It would be beneficial to have something in writing regarding using personal sick time versus COVID time since it was stated this was a case by case basis. Many other districts have procedures explaining this in uh, detail in writing. There should be a policy in place instead of having to contact Mr. Schofield, the business office or union representatives. I've had two co uh, coworkers question the lack of protocol this past week. This is causing some anxiety. And finally, on September 2nd, 2021, the state health guidelines released regulation section 2.62 outlining the testing of unvaccinated staff that 90 days expired a month and a half ago. So I'm just wondering if Mr. Schofield or the Board of Education has any updated information regarding this regulation expiring. It would be nice to see something updated from the state in writing. If we're just following the law from the state or the county, um, this should be shared with faculty and staff, especially those being discriminated against by the weekly testing. Thank you. Thank you. And we have uh, Ella W. I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it uh, Wissakevitz? Okay, thank you. And you'll be speaking on recycling facilities at Iroquois. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ella Wizikevich, and uh, tonight I would like to discuss the lack of environmental awareness in our school. Uh, I would like to start a club that focuses on recycling and saving the environment. Throughout the entire high school, we have um, two recycling bins for cans and bottles, 
Um, there's not any talk at all of recycling at Iroquois. No announcements are made, and like no one spreads any information about it. Uh, back in elementary school, we were taught a lot about the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. And we celebrated Earth Day every year. Every April, we were like, we went outside, we, we would talk about all the trees and how we are, we're all the future of this world, so we need to do our best to take care of it. Um, and then when we got to middle and high school, that all just kind of disappeared. Uh, the only two recycling bins at the school are normally full, like all the way full, you can't even fit like one can in it. And so no one's able to even recycle if they wanted to. Uh, I asked several teachers about this, like lack of environmental awareness in our school. Uh, one said that they had once asked where to recycle their cans and bottles, but were told to just throw them out. Another told me that they attempted to bring their own bag in for recycling, but when they went to dispose of them, both of the bins were completely full. Uh, the responsibility to clear out these bins is consistently unfulfilled. Personally, like my friends and I have noticed the same thing because we'll go into the lunchroom and we'll, we'll have our cans and we, we, we like, cannot fit more into the bin because nobody like, really cleans it out. Um, one teacher even told me that they just end up throwing out everything because there's no room and there's like nothing. Um, on the topic of the only two recycling bins we do have, they're never spoken about. Uh, as a school, we should be more aware of what we can do to protect the environment. More announcements can be made and additional methods of recycling should be provided. I hope to have the support of our school and the addition of a club to promote this effort. It's our responsibility to take care of the community and the only home that we have. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, back to you, Jane, that was it. Jane, I think you're muted. I, I just realized I was muted. Okay. Um, and that brings us to um, discussion on agenda items 10.2 through 10.5.7. Is there any discussion? No? Okay. Then uh, is there a motion to, uh, to request a withdrawal of a specific specific agenda item no is there a, a request to add a specific agenda item okay then can i have a request uh, uh yeah i'd like to request a motion to approve the consensus agenda items 10.2 through 10.5.7 so moved so moved please okay louise can i have a second second is that Heather? Yep. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Anybody abstaining? All right, motion carries. And that brings us to, um, well, we've already had a recognition of guest uh, on any topic. There's no one else that wants to be recognized. No, All right, is. and no. then um, we do need to go back into executive session to complete our discussion on a personnel issue. Uh, so if I could have a motion to move to executive session. So moved. Second. Can I have another second? Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So we will be going into executive session. For those of you who are uh, watching or there in, in person, um, when we do reconvene, it will simply be to um, officially end our meeting. There will be no more business uh, handled after uh, when, we, when we reconvene. It'll just be to, to say good night. <laughs> so thank you. And let's go to executive session. Thank you, everyone. Okay, and with that, I would like to call for a motion to adjourn our meeting. So moved, Chuck. Second. Second. Who seconded? Heather. Heather. 
Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Anybody abstaining? All right. And we are adjourned at 9.28 p.m. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thanks for everybody who came to, to hear our